Hi everyone, my name is Jason of the blog Jason D. Moore Photography, and today we're working in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom in order to do a black and white conversion. We're going to use a photo I took a couple years ago of a drive in theater nearby. We use this photo in part because it has a potential of having a lot of contrast to give a really nice black and white, and the subject itself really lends itself to being a black and white. It's practically asking us to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is right click and select create virtual copy. This will allow us to keep our original image intact and will allow us to do all of our adjustments on a copy so that we can see the before and after and see how far this photo has come. First thing we're going to do is hit the D key to switch over to our develop module and then hit R in order to set our crop. With the command or the control key held down, which will switch us to our straighten tool, we're going to click and drag along a line that we want to be horizontal or perfectly straight. You can also do this vertically if you wish. And release. That looks about right to me. I'm going to just push the image all the way over to the left hand side so the crop will be on the right side of the image just to give them a little more balance and then hit R again to commit it. As we go, we're going to start at the top right of our panel and work our way down. It's a fairly good workflow to use. It helps to make sure that you hit all the panels that are in Lightroom, and it gives you a nice workflow. It's straightforward, consistent, and it's easy to remember. The first thing we're going to do is immediately convert this to grayscale by simply clicking, you guessed it, grayscale. And already it's starting to look a little better. A little dark, but we're going to adjust that next. Uh, increase our exposure a little bit just to bring back some of the detail make sure the image isn't quite so dark you'll see that when I did that a lot of the detail up in the clouds has gone away it was an overcast day so that would be expected but there was some detail in there that we want to bring back so I'm going to just take the recovery slider and throw it all the way over to the right some of the darker areas need a little bit of adjusting bring them out a little bit more. So I'm going to increase the fill light up to around oh, 19 or 20 or something like that. Makes the image look a little bit flat as we lost some of the contrast, but it allows us to see a little bit more of the detail that would have been lost had we not done anything. In order to make it a little less flat, give it a little bit more depth, I'm going to increase the blacks just a little bit somewhere in that range. Let me back it off just a tad, right there. Next, I'm going to head, skip brightness and contrast. These are uh, are good to use, but I would suggest going down to the tone curve to do any brightness and contrast adjustments that you might make, because they give you a little bit more control and will uh, allow you to do more specific uh, adjustments. I'm going to head down now to the clarity slider. This will adjust to any of the contrast and the mid-tones of the image. And I'm going to just bump this way up to about, oh, in the 60 range. Moving along, we're going to head down to the tone curve. And immediately, just going to go down to the point curve and select strong contrast. Now, once I did that, you'll see that the pole and parts of the speakers here have gotten really dark, so I need to bring that back by using our dark slider and just bumping that up. I would say somewhere around oh, 20 or so is good. And that's all we're going to do in the tone curve panel. Next, we're going to head right on down to our grayscale mixer. And I'm going to just double click on the name grayscale mix to reset those. I'd gone through with my target adjustment tool so that I could uh, raise and lower the values of all the different colors in the image. But I'm not going to walk through those steps right now. You can try that out later. So what I'm going to do is just type in the, the levels that I had uh, come up with earlier. So it increases the reds to 2, the oranges to 60, the yellow we're going to drop down to minus 18, the greens down to minus 4, and we're going to drop the aqua and the blue all the way down to minus 100 to help bring back yet a little bit more of those sky details. And we're done with the grayscale mixer. 
Next one down is their split toning. I'm going to use this to add a little bit of a color cast back into the image. If you hold down the Alt key while adjusting the hue, you will see a 100% saturation preview of what color will be added to the image. I tend to like just a little bit of a warm image, so I'm going to stick right around 43. And I'm going to just increase the saturation ever so slightly to somewhere around 13 or 17 looks good as well. You'll see that this makes the image a little bit less flat as some black and whites can do and it just adds a little more interest and adds actually that little bit of nostalgia back into the image. And we're done with the split toning panel. Next will be detail. I zoomed in before and saw that there was some uh, noise in this image so I'm going to take some of that luminance noise out. I'm just going to bump that right up to about 56 or so, somewhere in there, to get rid of some of that. Images that contain a lot of metallic or plastic surfaces can take a lot of sharpening. A lot more sharpening than your average photo that contains people or landscapes. Um, so I'm going to bump the sharpening up quite a bit to 95 and then increase the detail up to about 50 to 60, somewhere in that range. That looks good right in there. And we're done with the details. Next is our lens corrections. Here is where we'll add a vignette to the image. I don't want to add too much of a vignette that would end up hiding the main subject of the image, which is the speakers, or the secondary subject, which is the screen. However, I want to keep the viewer's eyes focused into the image and not to anything else that might be on the screen. So I'm going to decrease the amount to minus 64 or somewhere in that general area, and there we have it. Now to see a good before and after, we're going to hit G to go back to our grid view, and control click on our original image before hitting the letter N in order to compare the two views. There you have it. A really quick and easy way of using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom in order to convert your color photos to black and white, and add a split tone, adjust the details, and come up with what I think is a much more dramatic and more interesting photo to look at. That's it for this time. You can find more information about me on my blog at www.jasondmore.com blog, or you can watch other videos that I've done on my YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com slash jasondmorephoto, or there's a link in the sidebar on my blog. Thanks again for stopping by. My name is Jason of the blog Jason D. Moore Photography, and we'll see you again next time.